Visiting Sao Paulo was a bit intimidating. We weren't really sure what to expect prior to visiting South America's largest city. However, we found that in the midst of the crowds and the chaos, there were cool pockets filled with parks, street art, and an abundance of restaurants. For this video, we also had two of our Brazilian friends join us and they were able to provide a unique window into the city. This travel guide will showcase 20 things to do in Sao Paulo, Brazil. we are visiting Ibirapuera Park and it's actually a really cool place like this area is full of art galleries and museums and you can go yeah. skateboarding you see tons of people exercising and yeah. the park's kind of divided up into different sections so you've got all kinds of museums and different activities and it's massive yeah super cool hangout spot and I can see it being really popular on weekends like this would be a great place to come and just enjoy being close to nature in the middle of Sao Paulo Within the park grounds, you'll find the Afro-Brazil Museum, which is a contemporary museum that looks at African culture and influence in Brazilian society. And not too far from there, you'll come across the Museum of Modern Art. time to get artsy in Sao Paulo. We are currently visiting Beco do Batman and that's Batman's Alley and it's basically a series of little lanes and alleyways covered in graffiti and it's super cool. So let's go! Batman Alley is located in Vila Madalena and it has become a popular tourist and Instagram spot. Apparently the place gets its name because of the first piece of graffiti to go up was one of Batman back in the 1980s. played hockey in Brazil, Sam. These aren't your kind of people. I know, this would be the most amazing museum if this was a hockey museum, but so <laughs> far we're loving all the posters and artifacts on the wall. Yeah. Like, there's a very impressive display. Let's go see the rest of the football museum. <laughs> yes! I win! I win! I beat Sam at football! <laughs> If you're a football lover, this is a place you won't want to miss. We thought the coolest part was a section where you can see projections of crowds cheering at a game and the powerful speakers make it feel like you're in the middle of the action. Being the foodies that we are, we couldn't skip the municipal market. Here you can find exotic fruits, fresh vegetables, meats, spices, and even restaurants. We went there right around the lunch hour to try the famed mortadella sandwich. Look at that! So we just arrived in Sao Paulo's municipal market. It is lunchtime. We were starving and we saw that they have these amazing mortadella sandwiches. monster as I was approaching the table Sam was like wow you know what I haven't seen a sandwich that big since we've had had it from Katz's in, in New York City do you remember yeah, the pastrami yeah, sandwiches we had there amazing. amazing and this place it's called coca bar I think I'm pronouncing that right in Portuguese coca Pocha. so yeah there's a huge line here the place is packed and we've ordered the sandwich that's called Bellissima so if you have a look here again it is Thick, thick amounts of mortadella, some melted cheddar cheese, and also sun-dried tomatoes in there, and like a, a fluffy white bun, like French bread. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's gonna be hard to bite into. Oh. Okay, so let's try and dip it into this spicy pepper sauce. Like this is so gooey and greasy. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at the cheese. 
Look at the cheese! Wow. Crazy. So good. <laughs> yeah? So good. Also, their sauce is quite spicy. A lot spicier than I was expecting, so I'm like, Woo! Oh. Your tongue's on fire. It's just so juicy. I know I keep saying this, but look at them. It's like oozing juice and grease, and it's just the bread is sopping it all up. Oh. <laughs> My gosh, one more bite and then I'll share. From there, we visited Sao Paulo Cathedral. We only learned this after our visit, but there's a crypt you can visit underneath the church. Next up, we headed to the neighborhood of Liberdaji, which has the largest Japanese community in the world outside of Japan. And because it was right around lunchtime, we decided to hit up a sushi buffet for some food. After three massive plates full of sushi, beyond stuffed, absolutely beyond stuffed. But I have to say, for this sushi buffet place, it was amazing. Normally, when you go to a sushi buffet, the quality tends to be low. The quality was really high here, and like we are leaving very satisfied. Yeah. So if you're in Sao Paulo and you're craving sushi, come to Danka. Danka. That evening, we met up with our Brazilian friends who took us out for a night on the town. Today we are hanging out with two of our Brazilian friends from Sao Paulo. This is Danny and Andre. And they've taken us out to an izakaya to have Japanese food. So, what are we having? It's both Japanese and Brazilian food. This Ooh. is coxinha, probably coxinha. the most famous Brazilian snack. Mm, that looks good. Yeah, and this is eggplant with miso and nira with egg. Ooh. And it's all delicious. And I think this is going to be some of the best eggplant we've ever had, apparently. So let's take a bite of that. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's that's good stuff. That's unbelievable. Yeah? That's more than good. <laughs> that's good. Good start. Over here, it's like intestines. Okay. From pork. Wow. Pork so, chicken throat and pork intestines. Yeah. So, what's it? Go for it, Sam. Sounds exciting. You Go for it. Yeah. I love the sauce. Check out, I gotta get lots of sauce on here. Let's try that. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like the sauce. Yeah, the, sauce yeah. the sauce is awesome. So was that the, the neck or the intestine? <laughs> the intestine. I did the intestine. The intestine. Yeah. Okay, brave boy. <laughs> So good morning 
from Sao Paulo. We had a bit of a late night last night singing karaoke with friends, but it's our last day in the city, so we need to go out and sightsee. Um, so we're starting off the morning with a traditional breakfast. So if you have a look down here, we just ordered coffee, coffee with milk, pretty simple. I've also got my pau de queijo. And, and that's a is, big one. That's a massive one. So <laughs> this is the, the cheese bread made with the manioc flour. Yes, and here comes the other part. This is the bread that has been cooked in butter, right? It's like the toast. Okay, so can you tell us how is pao na chapa made? Yeah, so basically they keep it really simple here in Brazil, which is kind of cool. It's just your bread cooked on a pan with butter. Yeah. So it's really simple, but it looks really tasty. Yeah. But it's so nice and buttery, and like the bread is flaky, it's like a French bread. They must put a lot of butter on there. Yeah, that's really nice. But you know what? I do wish they had a bit of jam. Like this bread with a bit of strawberry jam would just be you know what? magic. I would put cream cheese on mine. Cream cheese? With a dollop of strawberry jam on top. Ooh. Now that's the winning combo. Ooh. Look at that. It's so cheesy inside. This is amazing. Because you know what? We've been going to a place called um, Casa do Pau de Queijo. And over there, you get like these tiny little balls. They're just like bite sized. But this is like a proper that's, ginormous. That's the granddaddy of them all. That's that's bigger than her hand. Yeah, and like see if you can get the texture of this. Like just look at that. Oh, yeah. So cheesy. Oh. How's that? That's good. Perfecto. That's good. The stuff. That's authentic. Yeah. It's like really chewy because of all the cheese in there. Nice and starchy. It's good stuff. This is what I'm gonna miss when we leave tonight. Alright, time to try the coffee. Wow. It's really sweet, isn't it? Really, really sweet. There's a yeah. ton of sugar added. <laughs> I like it. I'm loving the coffee yeah, I, here. I like it too. I usually have my coffee black, but this is a this is a nice jolt of energy in the morning. Yeah. It tastes more like a dessert coffee. Mm -hmm. And now this is completely unrelated to breakfast, but you I saw cocada. I saw the cocada, and this is like our favorite coconut slash snack slash dessert. And it's basically just coconut and, and sugar. A whole bunch of sugar and maybe a little bit of milk. Look at this thing in beauty. It's like a coconut bar. Oh man. That is so good. It has nothing to do with breakfast, but yeah. I'm already eating sweets for breakfast. <laughs> You just couldn't resist. It's your last day in it's Sao Paulo. You may I'm as well enjoy it. <laughs> That morning we visited Pinacoteca do Estado, which is a cool art museum that focuses on works by Brazilian artists or works with Brazilian subject matter. After that we headed over to Parque da Luz. This park is right next to the museum and it has a lot of interesting sculptures scattered about. Sao Paulo's Teatro Municipal first opened in 1911. It's a beautiful building that houses the symphonic orchestra, the lyrical choir, and the city ballet. And it also has a cafe on site where you can enjoy some tea and cake in a setting unlike any other. The Martinelli building is 30 stories high and it was the first skyscraper in South America. At the time, people were frightened of such heights so in order to prove that the building was safe, the architect built a four-story mansion on top of the building and moved in with his family. Today you can visit the viewing deck where admission is free and you get some great views of Sao Paulo. Not too far you also have Edificio Italia, which is a 46-story high skyscraper. It too has a rooftop observation deck that is open to the public. Sao Bento is one of the oldest and most important churches in the city. Its foundations date back to 1598, though the facade you see today is from the 20th century. We were also pleasantly surprised when we learned there's a bakery inside the monastery. So we just finished visiting Mosteiro Sao Bento, which is a monastery, and they happen to have a bakery inside. So 
They make their own local bread and cakes, which is pretty cool. So we picked up a little muffin, and this one is made with apples, cinnamon, and walnuts. Wow, it looks delicious. Yeah. So apparently all the proceeds from the sales go back to the monastery and back to the church. Which is cool. And now let's see. Let's see what their the baking is veil. like. The Ooh la la. There it is. How does that look? Looks good. Let me break off a piece. Break off a chunk and try it. Mmm. Mm. That's pretty good. It has chopped walnuts inside. Nice cinnamon flavor. This is pretty good. I give it a thumbs up. The priests know how to bake. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> A short walk from the monastery, you'll find Centro Cultural Banco do Brasil, which is a cultural center that hosts contemporary art and exhibitions. And lastly, we went by the Renault Theatre, where you can catch some of the latest performances in the city. Now let's talk about transportation. Sao Paulo has the largest population of any city in South America and traffic jams are a daily struggle. We gave up on taxis early on and started taking the metro which is affordable and efficient. It might be a little packed during rush hour but it'll get you where you're going the quickest way possible. That's a quick look at how we spent two days in Sao Paulo. We hope you enjoyed this guide and that it gave you some ideas on how to tackle South America's largest city. As always, if you have any other suggestions of fun things to do in Sao Paulo, feel free to share those with us in the comments below. And for more travel videos from around the world, don't forget to hit subscribe.